Nature dilemma. You want to get past the bighorn sheep, but they are the worst pedestrians ever. Not following the rules of the road. There you go. That's how you get by. We are in Radium Springs, BC, British Columbia. And yeah, we it's quite a road trip from Edmonton, Alberta. It's about seven hour, almost a seven hour drive with all the stops. Um, but yeah, we decided to drive this um, car <laughs> uh, for the road trip, just for space and room. And gas. And gas, because gas is so expensive right now. And we couldn't fit the family in the SC430. I mean, we can for short road trips, but not for a big family adventure through the mountains. And, you know, our big family car is not on insurance right now. We'll fire that back up in the winter. So we decided to borrow this car from Scott's nephew. We did a trade. So he is having the time of his life in our convertible. And we are driving the... Uh, family soccer car kind of it's so got a pretty color it's got a pretty color like the burnt orange i really do like that about it um it is pretty you know comfortable for a longer road trip with children and all the things but i've got issues you do have issues first off this is in the way like if you want to get in there like who who designed that right I'm like, this a, it's a mystery, right? Second thing, you'll notice, oh, there's no headrest. There is a headrest. I have it here. It is so incredibly awkward. It puts you down like this, like you're, like you're 86 years old and you've got problems seeing. So I just took it off. It, I, I never have done this before in any other vehicle, but this was so uncomfortable. And there was no way to adjust it except for getting rid of it. So now it sits on the floor. We're on the highway. I want to use cruise control. I was just in a Volvo, a friend's Volvo. It was simple. Press a button, cruise control. Press it, off. This, come on over here, take a look. This, there's no, you press this button now, and it should be that, it should set it, right? That's kind of what that is. Forget it. It doesn't set, so you got to, I end up doing this all over the place, trying to set it, and then it shows up, the screen is dark, but it shows up here as a not quite bright version, ready for you to set it, but not. It, it is the most hmm. convoluted, crazy and non-intuitive way of setting up your cruise control that I've I've seen in any vehicle and I'm mystified as to why they do it that way. So those are the three that bothered me a lot. Now there's some good news in that once I took that headrest off it was comfortable although god forbid we get in an accident and I'll have bad whiplash right. Um, and everything else seemed to work fine. Uh, it drives like a truck I remind, reminded myself why I never want to have a crossover again. We had a Nissan Rogue. This drives just like it. And I don't ever want to have a Nissan Rogue again. And I don't want to have a truck like this again. Uh, the other part is I can't pair my phone. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on with NSYNC. Uh, I couldn't figure it out. And more importantly, our 13-year-old daughter, who should be able to figure it out like that, could not figure out how to get music from our phone into the NSYNC. Now, it's not, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, so it has to go through the wire, and we tried that and kept trying and kept trying, and it wouldn't go forward. So as far as I was concerned, uh, it's good on gas. Mm -hmm. That's about it, uh, and you've got room for stuff. But as a car that is both comfortable and um, makes sense, uh, the Ford Escape just barely edges out the Ford Edge, which is the ugliest car in the world today. We're back in Lookin' Beachy. We've now done about 1,500 miles in a 2016 Ford Escape. And we've learned a lot about this Ford Escape. Yes. We don't own it. It's a family member's. And we don't want to own it. That's one thing we've noticed, right? That's right. All right. You noticed one thing about what? Space? Space. The lack of there's no place in the front to put anything um, besides a couple coffee cups. So they didn't forget that. So that's nice. But no place to put your cell phone. Um, the RAV4 has it right here. Your mom has a RAV4. Yeah, lots yeah, of room. Lots of room. Right. But there's nothing here in the dash to put any. What I find interesting is you can put change right there. Yeah, right? like a little spot. But, right. but not on the driver's, not side, on the driver's side. Where it's usually the driver who goes through the drive through at Starbucks and McDonald's. So the passenger gets it 
but not the driver, right? Not the driver. Okay. So our uh, kids noticed we did get the child seat, which was easy to put in, right? That the child was seat was easy to get in. Yeah. Uh, so they, they did that right. But um, our elder daughter, who does not need a child seat, complained about how uncomfortable it was. Yes. Just so they missed that. Yes. Right? Uh, we got about 27 and a half miles per gallon, which on a four cylinder, I thought we would get more. Like this mm -hmm. has the eco boost uh, on it. It was about 27 miles per gallon, mm -hmm. which honestly is not maybe one mile per gallon better than what we were getting on the LS430. Which would you rather be in? The LS430, definitely. Um, yeah, just a better car, more comfortable, plenty of space for your things. And yeah, um, also with this car, you just don't, it feels like it's just not put together well. I just feel like it's poorly made. Right. Yeah. We do have one joke though. So the family member who has this car, I asked him what this was. Yeah. And I said, it looks like a CD player. No, nah, this, this car does not have a CD player. It's from 2016. And, uh, well, why don't you show what happens? Uh, he thought maybe it was a space saver for a vent for something. <laughs> But you have there a Rocky Horror Picture Show CD, and it is, in fact, a, a CD, CD player. player. That's funny. Uh -huh. We didn't even know we had a CD player. There you there go. go. Uh-oh, we better not play that, because you know what will happen. The question is, this car is 11 years newer, mm -hmm. has under 50,000 miles. Our SC is about to hit, or if it hasn't already hit, 160,000 miles. Um, which one? <laughs> Like this one has definitely more room. It's certainly more of a family car. Yes, he, and he's a single individual uh, who doesn't have a family. So the irony is, he has a family car, and we have the convertible. Would you take if he said, "Hey, I'll trade you right now"? This car is just way more practical, mm -hmm. right? Has fewer miles by a lot, and is eleven years newer. Would you trade him straight across? No. Nope. Why not? No deal. Because the Lexus uh, 430 is just an all-around better car, and I enjoy driving it. I enjoy being in it all the time, and I feel like it's um, it's just an all-around better car. It's going to last longer. It's going to go longer. And it's more fun. And it's more fun. This car doesn't inspire you to have fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, what should people do? Please like and subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Hello. Look at those horns. Look at those horns. Oh, oh, hello. Wow. It's looking at me. Hi. Hi.